fans, hello viewers, welcome once more back to the GC panel. In this second presentation, we are looking at June 2023, Pure Math Statistics, Paper 3, Question 2. June 2023, Pure Math Statistics, Paper 3, uh, Question 2. Guys, if you have not subscribed to this channel, make sure that you click on the subscription button not just because you want to motivate us so that you'll be able to see the other videos because not all our videos are free for some of the videos you need to be a subscriber before you can actually watch them thank you so much for always being there and please make sure you leave your likes your comments on this video and you share them okay let's take the question now <laughs> So in the previous question, which was question one, which we have already answered. If you have not watched question one, please look at the video, the previous video. And the next question, uh, video after this will be uh, question three. If you need the complete solution for maybe 2015 up to 2023 for these papers, please click on the link below or send a WhatsApp message and we'll send the copy to you in PDF. And then you equally send your token. It's at a token uh, for 2024. So make sure if you need these papers, need the solutions, whatever, just send a token for download or the papers is free. But for if you need the solutions, it's paid from 2015 to date. So question two reads, the yields to the nearest kilograms of 150 fruit trees are given in table below. So we have the yields X in kilograms, that's 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24, and so on. And then the number of trees, uh, F, that's the frequency, 4, 9, 18, respectively. Now the one comes to estimate two decimal places, the mean yield, the standard deviation of the yields, and C, draw a cumulative frequency curve for the data. And using this cumulative frequency curve, estimate the median yield and the quartile deviation of the distribution so let's tackle this question so we need to look for the mean 2dp the sd and the cumulative frequency curve which are going to use to get the median and the quartile deviation for the for this paper click on the link below and you can download it from the website or you send a whatsapp message for the paper so uh this is the question again to get the yields for this uh, 50 fruits we need the mean median and so on all right so the first thing this is the table which we have drawn we, uh, we have to redraw here the yields y and we have we have to get the mid values right because we need to find the mean yield to find the mean yield you need to get the mid values so from 10 to 14 the average you take these extremes 10 plus 14 is 24 divided by 2 we have 12 so the mid is 12 for 15 to 19 you have 17 uh, 20 to 20, you have 22 25 to 29 is 27 for the mid value and right down to 45 to 49 the mid value is 47. now the frequencies remain the same how do we find the mean the mean is given by each mid value times its frequency we sum all of that and divided by the total frequency, which in this case is 150. In a tabular form like this, it's very easy because you can just get the values there directly and you copy to your paper. And you can easily see errors. It's faster too. So from here, our mean yield, x bar, let's call it x bar, will be given by 1 over the total frequency times each score uh, by its frequency. It's supposed to be x f here, okay? So for each of the scores times the frequency, the sum is 4,670, which we have here. So this gives us 4,670 divided by 150. And our answer is 31.13. Why 0.13? Because they said two decimal places. Okay, so that's the mean yield. The next thing is the standard deviation of the yields. So there are other formulae. There are two ways we can do this. But we can equally apply this formula, one over the, the, the total frequency times each score minus that is uh, the squares of deviation of scores times their frequency we get the sum of that so each score minus the mean score we square it times the frequency in the case of a table i can just put it here each score that's the first score here the mid value 12 minus uh, minus the mean the mean value is at 1.13 i square that and i multiply by what the frequency so we do this for 12 you're going to have 12 minus 31.13 when we square it and multiply by 4 we have 1463.828 the same thing now for 17 so we have 17 minus 31.13 we 
we square it and multiply the value by 9. And when we do that, we are going to have 1796.912. So we do that for all of these mid values until 47. We have 47 minus 31.13, all of that squared times a frequency which is 7, that will give us 1762.998. When we sum all of these, we are going to have 9837.335, and we divide by what? We divide by the total frequency, which is 150. So that will give us 65.58223. But we have to give an answer to how many decimal places to two decimal places. So take note, so the final answer should be 65.58. Many students will end like this, but it's not okay. It has to be 65.58, okay? From here now, we can get the standard deviation, okay? But since this was not the last thing we had to look for, they said the standard deviation, we are still at the variance, so we can allow it like this. But now for the standard deviation, we are going to have the square root of 65 points that, which is going to give us 8.098. But is this the final answer? No. The final answer should be 8.10 when we round up. So I just wanted that you should take note on this. That's why I left the answer like this. That we should take note. Okay, now the C part says we should uh, make a cumulative frequency curve for this data. So here, uh, these are the cumulative frequencies. The first frequency is 4. 4 plus the next frequency, 9. That's 13. 13 plus 18, 31. 31 plus 28, 59. 59 plus 39, 98. 98 plus 30, 128. 128 plus 15, 143. 143 plus 7, 150. At the end of your cumulative frequency, if you don't arrive at 150, it means you are wrong. Why? Because you were told at the beginning that we have a total of 150 fruits or scores, something like that. So the total frequency is 150. At the end of your cumulative frequency, you should arrive at 150. We are now going to plot uh, these values that we have against these uh, cumulative frequencies, okay? But now since zero is not included, we always start at zero, zero from the origin, okay? Now, the next score that we have there is a 12. You can just plot it directly since an estimate, okay? So, you have 12 and 4. Uh, this is the position here. This scale is not very good because, you know, I'm working on uh, the screen is small. If I actually make uh, use the graph paper and bring it very small, you might not be able to see. So, I just had to maximize the scale. So, sorry for this, but this scale is not very good. So, here we have now the next score is we have 17 and 13. That's a mid value 17 where we have 17, uh, the cumulative frequency is 13. And we keep on working until we get to the last value. The last mid value is 47. So 47 is here. And this 47 will match with the cumulative frequency value of 150, okay? So now when we link this point, we are going to have an OGIF, okay? The cumulative frequency curve, which has this spiral shape. If you have this spiral shape, it means you might have an issue somewhere. Now that we have this cumulative frequency curve, they want us to find what? To find the median. So for this course, you have 150 of them. The median should be at half that position, which is 75. Okay? Half of 150 is 75. So we move along this line of 75 for the frequency onto the curve. We now move downwards. And the value is going to give us approximately uh, for Z, the median score will be the 50th percentile, right? And the 50th percentile here will be approximately 29, okay? We are approximately at 29 here. So if you have a value like 29.2 using your 20.2.3 and so on, or even 28.8, 28.9, 8 around this value, you will still be given the mark in the exam, okay? Because it's just an estimate. But if you go too far away from the estimate, you will lose the point. The last part is to find the quartile deviation, cure death. Quartile deviation is Q3 minus Q1, where Q3 is the upper quartile and Q1 is the lower quartile. So for the um, for the upper quartile, uh, for the lower quartile first, so we're going to take um, one quarter of 150, okay? That one quarter of 150 is going to give us approximately 37.5, right? We move along that line until we touch this curve and move downwards, we get the lower quartile. So the lower quarter Q1 is approximately 23.5. You can have 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, even 23.2 or 0.3. Then the upper quarter is Q3, three quarters of 150. So when we get that value, we now move to this line and until we move downwards and we touch it, 
So our cure 3 is 34.5. Therefore, our quartile deviation, upper quartile minus lower quartile will be 34.5 minus 23.5, which is equal to 11.0. I know that as you are watching this video, you have still not subscribed. Um, it does not really encourage us to make more videos. Please, if you love what we are doing and you love this channel, please do three things for us. Subscribe, click on the notifications, like, comment, and share this video. Please do this for us and you will really be promoting us. You will help many others who are in need and this video has gone a long way to bring smiles on faces. Thank you so much. The next question is question 3. Make sure you subscribe to watch question 3. Not all our videos are online. If you have not watched question 1 before, please click on the link, the previous link or the link below this video, watch question 1, question 2, question 3 and so on. All the other links are there to download the papers or to join our classes for 2024 every Saturdays and Sundays. Follow our adverts on YouTube, join our WhatsApp group and attend the meetings or the live classes on the platforms we'll be talking about. Thank you so much for being there and we hope that we meet you again in question 3.